It got so bad that I had to pull out the big guns because we don't like thrips. I don't need this in my life totally eradicated. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and today we're going to be talking about thrips. In this video I'm going to be talking about all things thrips including their appearance, their life cycle, symptoms, and treatment. So if you have realized that you've got thrips and you just need urgently the treatment, go to this time here and you could skip all the faff and just find out about the treatment. So if any of you have watched part two of my houseplant tour, you may have heard me talk about thrips quite a lot and I mentioned that a lot of my plants had it. That's because I had a fairly big thrips infestation that probably began around March and ended in around June. I was struggling with thrips for quite a while. Yeah, I, I mean, it wasn't ideal. Uh, it's never ideal to have pests on your plants, so kind of sucks. But hey, that's life, plants get pests. But there are ways to avoid them. So that's actually why I'm making this video today. I want to hopefully make having thrips less of a burden for you, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible to get rid of them as best as possible because we don't like thrips. What are thrips, you might ask? Thrips are these long, slender insects that suck the sap out of your plant's leaves and stems and flowers, essentially just like sucking the good plant juices out of your plant and causing it harm, making it distressed. And eventually if the infestation is bad enough, your plants could die. I know, not ideal. So we wanna prevent them at all costs. Thrips can be found on outdoor plants as well as indoor plants. But as I don't have any outdoor plants, I will only be talking about how to deal with them on your indoor house plants. So if you've got a thrift problem outside, I'm sorry. I don't really know how to help you because I haven't experienced doing it. So one of the main difficulties of thrips is that they can be quite difficult to deal with. It can be quite a struggle to get to a point where they're not coming back which is the goal in the end, to get rid of them. It can be quite challenging and it can be quite devastating for a collection. Likely, your whole collection will not die. So first off, let's talk about how to identify thrips. Thrips really, really like to hang out on the undersides of leaves. That is where the nice, soft, juicy plant sap is. And so they'll often be found on the underside of leaves. But of course, sometimes they come to the tops as well and you can see them up there. Also, they really, really, really like new growth. I found that they really like the softness and the tenderness of it, especially in like a coiled up leaf. They just get in there and start munching on it before it even unfurls and you wake up with a leaf that's dead. So because they do like to live on the bottom sides of the leaves, the problem can get out of hand pretty quickly because they're not super obvious to just like the average passerby, unless you're thoroughly checking your plant, you might not even notice them, which is how my problem got so big. I didn't notice because to be honest, I wasn't checking my plants as much as I should have been. Thrips have long skinny bodies with little pointy tails. They've got wings, but they're not necessarily the best at flying. So you probably won't see them buzzing around your house. If you do have little bugs buzzing around your house and your plants, they probably are actually fungus gnats. I have made a video on that if you need to learn how to take care of that as well. Adults are usually like a black or brownish color, but they can also be white or greenish depending on the variety. Baby thrips, the nymphs, they are usually lighter in color, like a white or greenish yellowish. That's what I was seeing the most of on my plants, the little babies, you watch them crawl around. They basically look like adults, but without the wings, they can't fly. So in order to combat the problem, we need to think about the life cycle of the thrip. So unfortunately, thrips can reproduce asexually, meaning that they don't need a mate in order to have babies. They can just have babies just on their own. And that can lead to the problem growing fairly quickly because they don't need anything else necessarily to make more thrips, which is great. So basically an adult lays eggs on the plant. Those eggs hatch into nymphs or baby thrips. Those nymphs hang out on the plant just munching away and eating as much as they please because there's loads of plant to eat. 
and eventually they will get older and grow wings and be adult thrips and go around laying more eggs, repeating the process. So from the time a thrip hatches until it becomes an adult, takes as little as two weeks, which isn't that long. And then adults can live for about a month or so. Oftentimes you're gonna have multiple generations of thrips on your plant all at once. And so you kind of wanna be combating it a lot and frequently in order to get rid of them because there will always be more eggs and there will always be more adults and there will always be more nymphs. So you're gonna have to repeat the treatments regularly in order for them to be totally eradicated. So it's really important that you identify thrips early. You do not want to let the infestation get out of hand because then it's just gonna be so much harder to get rid of them in the end. So you wanna be identifying them as soon as possible. So here are some of the symptoms that you can look out for on your plants to see whether or not they've got thrips. First off, white or silvery streaks on your plant leaves. That is just where they're sucking the sap out. It kind of leaves little streaks in the plant where they've eaten. Also faded or dirty looking leaves. Basically they're sucking the life out of the plant and so the leaf's gonna fade in time and not be happy. In the end you could have blotchy or red discoloration on the plant where they've just consumed and consumed and parts of the leaf end up dying. And like I mentioned earlier since they do like new growth having it come out deformed or not in good health is also another symptom. So this is it, this is the most important part of the video, the treatment. First off, as soon as you notice thrips, you want to start the treatment because you do not wanna like leave it a couple of days because in a couple of days, so many more thrips can grow and the problem could get bigger and bigger, it could spread fairly easily. So as soon as you notice the thrips, you want to start treating. So once you've noticed that one of your houseplants has thrips, you want to check all of the other houseplants in its immediate area, making sure that they don't also have thrips because you're gonna need to treat them as well. If there are any really heavily infected bits of your plant, I found that it's best to just prune them off. If the leaf is pretty damaged, it's probably not worth saving because it's not gonna go back to normal. So just take a pair of sterile scissors to it. It'll be worth it, I promise. It's better to just get rid of it than have to keep treating it and treating it for a leaf to be like deformed and ugly. Next, you wanna take the plant and spray it down. I bring all my plants into the bathtub to do that. I've got a removable shower head that I use to spray them all down. I make sure I'm using tepid water. You don't want it to be too hot or too cold because that can shock your plants. But you wanna make sure you're spraying down the tops and the bottoms of all the leaves as well as the stems, the new growth. Just spray the entire thing because spraying them will knock them off, make them go down the drain or kill them by drowning. It's just trying to get as much of them off and dead as possible. You do want to be careful though of overwatering your plants because obviously you're spraying a lot of water you don't want too much of that to be going into the soil regularly. And you wanna be really careful because you're gonna to have to repeat this step every few days for the foreseeable. I know it's a lot of work, it's difficult, but in order to actually get rid of them with this method, you need to just repeat, 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 repeat every few days until they're gone. That alone can work for some people. If your infestation isn't terribly bad, that will do. That alone didn't work for me. The next thing I tried was washing the leaves with an insecticidal soap. So after I'd sprayed them down, tried to get as much off as possible, I would take the soft side of my sponge, some insecticidal soap, and just kind of lightly scrub the leaves, get them on nice and sudsy, get the insecticidal soap in there. Again, trying to get off as much as possible, killing them. And again, you want to be repeating this, every few days until the problem is gone. Didn't work for me either. So I introduced a neem oil spray into this as well. So I would spray the plant, I would wash the leaves, and then I would douse the entire thing in a neem oil spray. The neem oil spray doesn't kill the thrips immediately. Instead, when the thrips feed on the leaf that's been sprayed with the neem oil, a chemical in it sort of 
takes their brain and convinces them that they shouldn't eat and so they all starve to death. So it is a really good preventative measure. But again, this takes quite a long time. It's not gonna kill them immediately. So you should use it in conjunction with some other things as well. You can buy neem oil sprays, but I have found that it's much more cost efficient for me to make my own. So I will put the recipe I use down below in the description box and a link to the website that I found it if you want to make your own. It is important though, before you do use neem oil, to test it on a little bit of your plant beforehand because especially with homemade mixtures, they can not react well with your plant in some cases. I personally have never experienced anything like that. I've never had any issues with my neem oil spray on my plants but it is something that can happen, so it's better to test it first. Also, I've heard that blue or yellow sticky traps work really well to catch adult thrips because they can fly and they're attracted to the bright blue or yellow traps. I personally didn't try that. I didn't feel like it would make all that much sense for me, so I didn't try it, but apparently it does help. So if that's something that you wanna do, go for it. So all of those methods were like the natural ways that I had heard about getting rid of thrips. If the infestation isn't super bad, they can work. And they did work on some of my plants, but I found that it didn't work on all of them and I was just struggling to keep the infestation at bay. It just wasn't working out for me in the end. It was difficult for me because I wanted to keep my house plants like natural. I didn't want to use any like chemical insecticides or anything like that because that kind of scares me. I try and be as natural as possible, but it got so bad that I had to pull out the big guns. So I was looking on Facebook in one of the house plant groups I'm in because I'm in like five. I saw that there's this spray that you can get called Prevanto. Basically spray your plants and it kills them. Sounds too good to be true, but it's not. I personally got the concentrated kind. You can also get it in spray bottles already mixed, but I figured I've got a spray bottle. I can mix some up for myself. So apparently Provanto kills lots of common plant pests in the garden and in the home, like caterpillar, black fly, green fly, white fly, lily beetle, mealybug scale, leaf hopper, and thrips. So all good things there. So I used the Provanto one time and on almost all of my plants that were infected, done. No more thrips. Thrips were gone. Didn't have to worry anymore. And that was just like the best feeling ever, ever. And I've heard some people say that they did need to repeat the process a couple of times. And on the box, it does say you can repeat up to five times in a year and that's totally fine. But you do want to be really careful with these methods because apparently thrips can build up immunity to chemical insecticides. Fingers crossed, knock on wood, that that isn't gonna happen to me because I found that the Provanto worked really, really well for my house plants. Even the ones that didn't work on the first time, within the second time, I haven't had any issues. All of my plants have recovered fine and I actually haven't seen a thrip in like a month. I know, a month without thrips after like four months of battling them. It felt so freaking good just to be done with them. I think from now on, as much as I do want to be natural, I think Provanto is gonna be my best friend in situations like this. I'd rather not risk my whole collection, so it's just better. Another thing to note is that it is a bit toxic, so you wanna make sure that you're not ingesting it in any way. Your kids or your pets are not ingesting it in any way. So keep out of the reach of children and pets and stuff. So we wanna keep everyone safe and not dead. When you're doing all these treatments, it's really important to then keep your plant in isolation. You want to separate it from all of your healthy plants because you do not want them to mix because then the problem will just keep spreading and cause more issues. So you wanna keep that plant in isolation for as long as it takes to get rid of the thrips. It's always better to be preventative than to have to deal with an issue. And the best thing to do for prevention is just to check your plants regularly, like once a week, go around, have a look at them, make sure they're doing okay. It can be when you're watering your plants, it doesn't really matter as long as you're having a look at them and making sure they're all right. 
This is something you should be doing anyway, just to make sure that they're happy and healthy. And so it's not that big of a deal to add that little extra step of just checking the bottoms of the leaves, just to see if they've got pests. Another important prevention thing is to debug all plants that are coming in from outside. Whether that be plants that you have let summer outside and you're bringing them in for winter, or if you are bringing them into your house from the plant shop or they're coming in by mail from an online order, you want to debug those plants right away. It's best to just bring them in, give them a good shower, give them a spray of neem oil for preventative measures, prevent it as best as possible. It's just important to check because they can come in from the outside and you do not want that if at all possible. So yeah, that's it. That's how I managed to get rid of thrips and how hopefully you can too. I really, really hope for everyone's sake that your plants don't have thrips and that if they do, you can manage to get them gone as fast as possible because I know it sucks. I've got my fingers crossed for you. You can do this. They will be okay in the end. And if it's not, I'm sorry. I will also be sure to link all of the products I used in my treatment attempts down below in the description box. So if you want to try any of the ones I tried, it will be down there. So that's it. If you like this video and found it helpful, please do give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplant things you'd like me to talk about in a future video and subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.